I have very strong, mostly positive feelings about where I'm from and a deep affection for where I'm from. But I see uh, a kind of po poetry or poignancy in these things that are, are disappearing. The South is changing rapidly. It's becoming a, a more affluent part of this country, and it's, but it's unfortunate that it's beginning to look like almost everywhere else. And these things that I've photographed, that I've made sculptures of, that I've drawn and painted are not, got, not going to be around much longer. Welcome back to another video, people. Thank you for tuning in once again. And today we're going to be talking about William Christenberry. And I might have hinted at this in the title or thumbnail, but basically he has been a bit like forgotten or not as talked about as much as other color photography pioneers, such as William Eggleston, who we also, we also featured him on the channel. Links will be somewhere as well for that video. But basically, that's precisely why we're here today. It's not a negative way. On the contrary, we're here to shed some light on his work. And trust me, he talks about memory, talks about um, documentation, the importance of time. Very, very interesting concepts to photography. So we're here to learn today. So buckle up, grab a drink, make yourself comfortable, and let's go straight to another video. Kristen Berry was first and foremost an artist of many different medias, and throughout his life he painted, worked with drawing, sculpture, and photography. And he first discovered photography as a supportive medium to his painting. He began taking pictures with a humble Kodak Brownie camera in the 1950s. And I believe he became a color photography pioneer a bit by accident, because he had no real interest in becoming a fine art photographer. And since the sources for his paintings were the buildings and landscape of the South, he photographed it in color so we could then use these snaps as references for his paintings. And I believe it's quite understandable to see a painter using color snaps as references for their paintings. And so without caring so much about what others would think, he continued photographing with color film during the 50s and the 60s. And this was a time where color film was used for television, Hollywood movies, and alternatively, for the average dad or mom to take pictures of their family and daily life. But slowly and due to the work of certain photographers during the 60s, this barrier of resistance to color by the photography art world was broken. And if you want to know more about this, I did a video a while ago on black and white versus color, and we go through this in more detail, and you're welcome to check it out if you haven't already. And trust me, if he became a bit of a color photography pioneer by accident, he also became a famous photographer, let's put it this way, in the southern culture, and also, you know, a serious photographer in that matter, a bit by accident too. And that is because he didn't care so much about, you know, his photography. He used it as references, as we, you know, have, as I've mentioned before. But then he met someone who gave him a lot of praise and who told him that he should take photography more seriously. And after Kristen Berry came across this book, titled Let Us Now Praise Famous Men, he discovered the work of Walker Evans. And Walker Evans was someone he then befriended, and when he showed his snaps to Walker Evans, he told him that he should pursue photography more seriously. And I think I'm glad he did say that, because he basically said, go down south, where he was originally from, and photograph it. And that's exactly what Kristen Berry did, and this is why we have the images that we probably have them today. And for someone who achieved the notoriety he did, Kristen Berry was quite a unique photographer. He roamed around the South, particularly Hale County, notoriously one of the most humble parts of the state of Alabama, and near the border with Mississippi. Curiously enough, a county also immortalized by Walker Evans, who had photographed it back in the 1930s during the Great Depression. And part of his uniqueness as a photographer was not only his subject matter, the southern landscape, which at the time wasn't seen as a prolific or extremely interesting subject in the eyes of the art world, 
but he also didn't care much for the processing of his images. He never worked in a dark room, and most of his film, I read, was developed by local drugstores. Furthermore, he had five cameras, two Kodak brownies, one 8x10 camera, a Polaroid, and a 20x24 field camera. He was never interested in having curators and printers working for him, or for that matter, to bring attention to his work. He just enjoyed doing what he was doing, and this was perhaps what made him a symbol of Southern photography. And what he was doing, and what he was capturing, the buildings and the landscape of the American South, with its wooden churches, shacks, old storefronts and abandoned houses, was placing light in the unrefined and genuine. And while some might look at Kristen Berry's work and shrug their shoulders and see that there's no value in this, and, you know, I would, you know, respect that, I just have to politely disagree because I feel like even in their most, you know, simple form, these photographs reveal something. And that is that the fact that he made certain choices to what to leave in, what to leave out, um, you know, as he photographed buildings over the years, um, he chose to photograph them with no people at all, or sometimes they were abandoned, sometimes they weren't. And I feel like these choices, the angles, um, you know, the focusing on certain textures and whatnot, bring forward the idea that photography is not just the direct representation of something, but it also is the amount of decisions that we make with a photograph. It becomes an interpretation of something. And I feel like this is such an important thought and something that we can retain from looking at these images. And so, as we probably heard in the beginning of the video, Kristen Berry was interested in recording the passage of time. And he often photographed the same location throughout the years, the same buildings, fences, or road signs. And I recently got a book on William Kristen Berry, which showcases how he organized his images in grids where he can observe the changes in a certain place or landscape. And this is incredibly interesting visually speaking, but also elusive to the importance of memory and the idea of creating memories or perpetuating a certain memory through photography. And what remains with the passage of time is generally a skeleton of a building, a sign, or whatever are the parts of the physical location we're recording. But on a non-physical level, what can remain with the passage of time is a memory, a manifestation, or a document. And photography fits in all these three categories like a song or a movie would do. It can be elusive to a memory, it can manifest an interpretation, and it can definitely be a document. And in this context, Kristen Berry treated the camera as if it was something that recorded the passage of time, but also the human element or presence. And although we've talked about this in previous videos, we can definitely capture human presence or the human element without necessarily capturing people. And in this perspective, we capture what they left behind, or like Kristen Berry, how they modified or converted a certain landscape. And so in essence, Kristen Berry photographed a fading world, a disappearing kind of world, the world he knew and never wanted to forget. And we've seen this before with the photography of the German couple Ila and Bern Becha, who also photograph extensively certain industrial regions in Germany and throughout Europe and the US, as a way of immortalizing the vanishing industrial landscape. And if you're interested in knowing more, the video is up on a channel, and so you're welcome to watch it. And okay, now that I've reached this point of the video, and you know, that I've gone through so much with you, and, you know, I've got the book, which, by the way, uh, it's really, really complete and goes through different areas as well of uh, Kristen Berry's art, um, you know, paintings and sculpture and whatnot. I feel like it's important to ask myself, and what have I learned with this? What has William Kristen Berry taught me? And I feel like the first and foremost, like, thing that came to my mind when I asked myself this was about being genuine being genuine with who I am and being genuine with my photography. What is my photography about? What do I want to say with my photography? And even though I can take, of course, inspiration from others, I should be faithful to who I am, what I want to portray, what's in my heart. And I think this is very, very important and very seldom put on a table. And on a subject of memory, I learned and understood that photography is a medium that can encompass a relationship with memory, with legacy, and with preservation of things 
So everything not saved in one way or another will be lost, whether it is because the negatives can burn, my phone or computer can break down, and I might not have a copy of anything, or the inevitability of my life ending and my memories not being transferable to others. So, in essence, photography can be that glue that allows us to preserve memories, knowledge, emotion, and to a certain degree, save things from being lost. And also that photography can definitely work or sustain other media, such as painting or sculpture. And one interesting thing about Christenberry is that many of the buildings he photographed, he was also able to convert these images into models which aided in the preservation of their memory. And talking about converting and the preservation of memories, you might have old videos with obsolete formats or files that you'd like to convert to share with friends or keep up to date with. And let's face it, these days, working with digital media, images and video can be a pain. Formats not being recognized, crashing or files being too big. And since the pandemic, our world has become more and more digital, which means we have to upload and share more files so in this scenario, Wondershare's UniConverter comes in handy. And unlike other softwares, UniConverter, as the name suggests, is a converter for all files, whether that is an image, a video, or audio. So you can kiss the frustration of converting and merging videos goodbye, because this software allows you to do it efficiently and without hassle. And you can also record meetings, convert DVDs to any format, or transfer files to smartphones without restrictions. And I mean, these features are literally never ending. You can convert, remove noise, compress, remove backgrounds. And for $39 a year or $55 as a one-time purchase, I think it's a quite an affordable tool that can definitely make a difference. And you can use it both with Windows or Mac. And the links to it will be down below if you want to check it out. And thank you, Wondershare's UniConverter, for sponsoring this video. And so this has been all for today. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the channel. It truly means a lot. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. I think we brought um, different things um, to the table, such as memory, time, the idea of documenting what's left behind. And I feel like this is a very timely video because I presume that a lot of people will be spending um, their holidays with their family or, you know, like with their close ones. And I feel like it's important to just, you know, these holidays, enjoy it and maybe just like make a photo or two that, you know, you can kind of like remind remind you in the future of those people of those moments and you know just enjoying the moment and i feel like it's an interesting um experience to touch on these because i'm especially going to be doing that as well this year not that i'm going to be recording everything but i'm definitely going to be um with this thought as i spend the holidays this year and i guess that it's been all for today so thank you so much for tuning in with the channel i appreciate you watching and sharing um, if you want to grab a print, links to it will be down below. Links to more videos, links to things that we discussed during the video. And yeah, I guess that stay safe, keep shooting film uh, or digital or whatever you do. Subscribe for a cookie or two. Peace.